we've been sold a lie. And the lie is that songbirds are the backup vocalists of nature. Dainty little friends that eat seeds and land on princess fingers. But then there's the Shrike. The Shrike looks like it should be singing back up for Snow White, but it's actually auditioning for a role in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a fluffball that woke up and chose violence, and arguably the only songbird that maintains a dedicated murder pantry on a barbed wire fence. If you saw him at a bird feeder, you wouldn't even pause your playlist. He looks like a mockingbird going through a goth phase, wearing a little banded mask to look tough, just like a budget Zorro who lost his sword and decided to improvise with a sharp stick. We're talking about a creature that weighs the same as two AA batteries, and the feet, <laughs> pathetic. Those are weak, delicate little twig holders. Evolution gave them the hardware of a choir boy, but the software of a convict. But if you were a mouse, a lizard, or even another bird, you don't want to mistake this guy's background noise. He's the quiet neighbor who keeps to himself, always says hello, and then one day you find out he has 27 people stored in his basement freezer. You see, the Shrike is the only songbird that woke up one morning and decided it wanted to be a raptor but evolution forgot to give it talons. So instead of gripping his prey, it improvised and turned the entire world into its butcher shop and found all sorts of interesting things to stabby stab stab its prey. So let's introduce our subject properly. The scientific name, Lanius Ludovicianus, which means the singing butcher. How lovely. But we're going to call him Vlad the Impaler spirit animal cause you know, I'm just being real here. The Shrike has the energy of a middle management accountant who moonlights as a mafia enforcer. He doesn't look like he can throw hands. He doesn't have the impressive claw of a hawk and the speed of a falcon. He just has an attitude problem and a very specific set of skills. While most predators kill because they're hungry, the Shrike kills because he has interior decorating to do. But he isn't using throw pillows to accent the living room. He's using the impaled corpses of small rodents and other animals to really tie the whole thorny bush together. He's basically the Martha Stewart of murder scenes, turning a lovely hedgerow into a horrifying sun-drenched charcuterie board. Here's the problem though. Eagles have those talons. They squeeze until the prey assumes room temperature. The Shrike has useless little twig grabbers. If a Shrike tries to squeeze a mouth to death with its feet, the mouse is just going to be annoyed unless it past tenses itself from laughing. So nature gave the Shrike a loophole. It's called the Tamile Tooth. Or Tomile Tooth? Tamile Tooth? I don't know. Anyway, a tooth. It's really sharp. It's a notch on the upper beak that's exactly like a falcon's. He targets the neck to force a permanent system reboot on the spinal cord. Science calls this inertial feeding, which is nerd speak for shaking the thing till it stops moving. I call it the exorcist protocol. He clamps down onto a lizard and headbangs it like he's trying to win in the mosh pit at a Slipknot concert. This creates six Gs of force. That isn't a shake, that's a car wreck. It's the physical equivalent of getting T-boned at an intersection, except the car is a bird the size of a stapler and the seatbelt is a beak clamped onto your spine. In the grand scheme of things, your safety depends entirely on your weight class. If you're a grasshopper, don't buy green bananas, you won't be around to eat them. If you're a mouse, go ahead and update your will because your credit score is about to expire along with your heartbeat. As humans, we get a pass. Just pray you don't get reincarnated as a lizard, because if you do, the Shrike is going to turn your next life into a very short, very painful art project. But snapping necks isn't the main event. It's what happens after. Remember, the Shrike has no talons. He can't hold his food down to eat. It's like trying to cut a steak without a knife. So the Shrike uses the environment as a prosthetic limb. Thorns, barbed wire, sharp twigs. He impales the victim to hold it steady while he carves it up. But it gets darker. The lubber, or red shank grasshopper, is a walking chemical spill. It's toxic. If a normal bird eats it fresh, they get sick or expire. The Shrike knows this. So he impales the grasshopper and other noxious insects like the monarch butterfly and the eastern narrowmouth toad and leaves it there for days. He isn't destroying it, he's aging it. He waits for the toxins to degrade. He's dry aging his poison so he can eat it safely. That is a level of premeditated chemistry that belongs in a Breaking Bad episode, not a birdhouse. This special display is called a larder. It serves two purposes. One, it's a pantry, yum. Two, it's a Tinder profile. Male shrikes build the most gruesome displays possible to attract females. Nothing says I'm a good provider like a thorn bush decorated with 25 corpses. 
It's like King Joffrey's idea of interior design. But despite being the absolute bosses of the hedgerow, the Shrike is disappearing. In Canada, and across much of North America, their numbers have plummeted. They need open grasslands, hawthorns, and barbed wire fences, the very things we're replacing with subdivisions and monoculture crops. We're losing the butcher bird, and while they might be terrifying if you're the size of a thumb, they are a vital part of the ecosystem. They control pest populations and, quite frankly, they add a little bit of heavy metal to the countryside. So the next time you see a cute bird on a wire, check the fence below them. If you see a lizard on a spike, tip your hat. You're in the presence of greatness.